Western Stories Episode 2 Wild Bill Hickok, Indian. Death in the teepees, waits for the pale face. Death by the hand of the chopping knife, limping pony, or lo- laughing loon. Death by the hand of moon. Woman, widow of the man, pale face killed. Death is everywhere for. I have it, his guns. Kill the pale face, Hickok, now. Wild Bill Hickok. He's known as Tony Marshall and Gunman. Few people know that he was actually a member of the Cherokee Indian tribe in Kansas, where he lived for some time. This is the story of his early life and of the days when he lived as an Indian. A hot summer's day in the year 1855 in Leavenworth, Kansas, men were gathering to join General Jane's, General Lane's Red Leg Rangers. I'd like to join your Rangers, General. Sorry, boy. I am and I ride on a death mission. You're too young. Besides, you need a horse and a saddle. Rifle and rover. Yes, sir. Hold on, boy. If you can shoot, shoot. Someone come and shoot. One. Everyone come shoot. One shoot. Win one big prize is by testing much ship against all comers. Asking that this boy if he could shoot was like asking if a fish could swim. Next day, the rangers gather on the town green. Don't go on, somebody laughed and made me miss. It was you that laughed, git, before I tan your hide. But I was here for the shooting. I want to win a horse and set on guns. All right, son, shoot. If you miss, I'm going to tan your hide right here in front of everybody. Shoot. I'm shooting. Most later, an old look crosses the face of General Jim Lane as he stares down at the target. Bless me, the bell he shot better with all three of his shots than anybody else did with one. Best you never saw. What's your name, boy? Wait a minute. There's a pistol shooting. Two. This boy ain't walking off with any prizes just for being good with a rifle. But he was in, in the way for revolver shooting the boy really excelled again and again he borrowed he, he borrowed shotguns roared you won you won every prize there was son what is your name anyway hiccup general james butler hiccup oh most people folks call me bill young bill hiccup this was before he got the nickname Wild Bill. Rode with the Red Lake Rangers who defended Kansas people and territory with the bloody raids of the Missouri. Pro slavery men. Here they come, Bill. I'll feed the lid, lid to them. Sometimes they made raids in the Missouri, for this was the dark and bloody ground, and death was a daily occurrence. In one of the raids, Bill Hickok finds himself cut off. From his companions, must have taken a wrong trail back. What's that sound? The sound was a Cherokee war cry, a looping bear. The chief defends himself from the tre- a treacherous attack. Yeah, there are the odds. These are the odds that Hickok cannot stand. He, so he kicks his horse into a gallop, caught two of them. Now to handle these others. Bash whack, pale face. You have saved the life of Lupin Bear, chief of the Sherrock Shawnee. These traitors would have killed me. I made chopping knife. Chief, come. We have we have bro- blood brother. We twi- hold between us. A slash and a Shawnee hunting knife. His blood oozes from sliced thumb as they press the- together. There, by the ancient right, we are now brothers. Bill Hickok forgot his bond during the next few months. He busy defending Kansas from the Missouri- Missourians and riding with the Red Legs. Then one day, after leaving the Rangers, he's caught with the lone of Perry. Twenty Indians, no place to hide. My bonk, bonk 
is lame. I can't m- make a race of it. When a bullet fails his lame horse, he fires coolly from behind the dead horse animal. Got five of them, but they keep coming. The trail of dead Indians testifies his accuracy with his colts, but the others move in. Bill Hooker goes down, fighting. Too many can't stop them all. Hard hands swing him round. Wide foams are twisted by his waist. A helpless prisoner, he is brought to the Shawnee village for the torture. He is led to face to face with Chief, my pale faced brother, blood brother. Thunder, I've forgotten all about it, the day I saved your life. Hear me, I people, this is my pale faced blood brother. He's one of us. Treat him as you would, my son. Later, he's induced to the family, Lupin Bear. My sister, Little Pony. All the pleasure's all mine, ma'am. In the days that follow, young Bill Hookup and Little Pony see much of each other. Tell me of your tribe's marriage customs. One day, I like this free life, Little Pony. Marry me and I'll remain here and live the, 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 the life of your people. Hookup and Little Pony were married. For some months, they lived happily. Bill Hookup soon became the greatest hunter in the tribe. And again, he, again, his rifle brings down the biggest buffalo from the herd. His teepee was always filled with food. My husband makes me very proud. No other girl can boast so many buffalo robes, robes so many steaks to eat. Chuck's man, man has to take care of his woman, doesn't he? It seems a happy life. But uh, here on their black eyes are alive with hate, stare grimly, a little hot co- hiccup trophy, pale-faced killed coyote, and loopy loon. I, a crazy calf and dog running, where he sat, sent them to kill looping bear some moments ago. Talk of vengeance floats up. With the smoke of the teepee fires, pale faces protected by looping bear. What say you, widow of the dead Cody? Cody went to kill looping bear. Uh, chopping knife be chief. What, why, why does not chopping knife kill slayer, my husband? Moon woman speaks truth. I, chopping knife, will kill the pale face who will aid me. I will. I, I. Then the pale face man dies. I. When he is dead, we will kill Looping Bear, too, and I, Chopping Bear, will be chief of all the Shawnee. One night, a red hand lifts the thrust back a two-piece flap. A piercing scream rips through the silence of the night. Yeah, look out! The frenzy, the Shawnee wife of Bill Hickok leaps to his defence. Beware, Bear Will. They come to kill me. I have his guns. You are red murderers. You killed little pony. Moon woman is fast as she swings the heavy shell bullets away from Hickok. But he, there is madness in young Bill. Makes him chain like lightning. His movements are keep the belts. I'll take the guns. Frenzy and sorrow and fury work in the Hickok. This night, his guns blast wildly, bringing death to those who seek to deal out deaths themselves. Die as you die, made my wife die. The little pony, all my look, killing, cannot bring you back to life. It's after the little pony was buried, but Bill Hickok turned his back on the Shawnee camp. His life in the Indian was at an end. He rode off to Mon- Mon- Monticello, Township, Johnson County. County, Kansas, where he received his first job, a town tamer of Marshall. Story number two. Jacqueline Marinetti. For almost four years, there was a mo- he was the most feared and hated man in California. His own rage was turned against that of 
American and Chinese, Spanish and Mexican. He stole and he was killed. He seemed utterly without mercy. Now men would be taken into his gang or cut throat rubbers and say it's without proof that he had killed at least one man. This is a story of his, man history known as Jaquel Magritte, the terror of the Seglequists, the man in the world best called the California Terror. I am Jaquel. Try and catch me, Yankees. During the 1950s, Magritte worked as a gold miner on the banks of Seloquis River in Sonora County. Your, your food, Jaquil. Coming, Rosa, I have panned much gold. Today, soon, we will be rich. Ah, this is a fine world, this California. A fine world ended with a young miner one night in late spring. Come on, come on in, Creaser. we got news for you. Rosa, what? Greasers ain't wanted here. It, take, it just teach you to get out and stay out. We saw you stealing gold from our friends. He's out cold. When he comes to, I don't think he'll stay around here. Before they went, the bearded hoodlums took the gold. There was all that stood between Jacquel, McGraw and poverty. I really think he stole the gold from the other miners, Joe? Who cares? He no, he's no more. It's, it's ours. Well, what will we do now? Right at my brother's ranch. He will give me a job. He will forget what happened here. So months later, in a small town near the McQuarrie Ranch, hold on to you, that horse. Your riding it was your riding was stolen from me. A horse belongs to my brother. I work for him. Hey, boys, this Greaser and his brother are horse thieves. Who can tell who was in the right? Well, America above his horse is almost accused, honestly mistaken. Within a few hours, his brother was hanging from the rope, a lash cutting over Jekyll's back. I find them and kill them all. I will I have a vengeance on all mankind, what they have done to me and mine. Some nights later... Along a little pacer stream, stream, Marity, you're the first of the men who hung my brother and whipped me. There, there will be others, and many others. In the days that followed, it seemed that Joquel Macrati was the same, for his victims were found horribly slashed and mutilated. Got, he got, he got Joe. Better keep the woman out of bail. Sights, what did he say to Joe? Makes me sick. Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, as the wheats gathered, slipped in the months, Jaquil McCurdy gathered a gang of hardened killers around him. Soon the armed desperados made life in California a dangerous thing. They robbed, they killed mercilessly, heartlessly, just for the fun of seeing men die. Ha <laughs> ha! His men entered towns disguised as people, persons of tradesmen, to learn where the gold and jewels were hidden. In a few days, Marretti would lead his particulars to the place settled for the ro- selected for the robbery. I see my men use it as well. These, these jewels have purchased your life, you know. Sometimes Jacob Marretti himself rode on these by ventures, and sometimes he was recognised. There is McGretty himself. Will never catch me, Sonors. Makes a great away. The sound of the quail, Marati's mocking laugh ran across the all California from San Juan Capstan to Fort Ross. You'll have all winter to pan the gold. Now I take it from you in half an hour. Ha <laughs> ha. Once he's arrested at a dance, you're under arrest, stranger. You can't come in here, start a fight. Of course, Sheriff, I'll go gladly with you. On the road to jail, Magretti welled and drove a dagger downward. 
Too bad you will not live to tell the Americans that Jacquel Marchetti himself is a prisoner. In 1852, the bandit drove a herd of several horses, hundred horses to Sonora, entirely unmolested by the law. Of these, Marchetti picked out the swiftest for himself and his men. It's a good one, Joanne. To make getaways in need, we need the fastest horses we can find. I uh, seized Jacquel. Ever he heard a man was on the trail, he made a point to seek him out. The fellow Wilson wants to capture me. I want to men to stage a fight in the rest front of his hotel. The fight progressed. Wilson came out of his room. Say, what's going on? Turn, Wilson. Turn and recognize me. I am the man you seek. Well, you have found it, me. Finding me will not do you more harm than good, however. Aha! Sometimes his daring bow meringued on him, a minor account where he had gone to learn details of future robbery. He was recognized. You'll never get out of here alive, Gretty. You know me? Too bad for you. Odds of twenty-five to one are high, but then the word Jacquel Moretti is no ordinary man. Moretti seemed to bear a charmed life as he galloped out to the camp. For all you think you can catch Jacquel, but a charmed life is not always to be so lucky. May, 19, in May, in May, that's 1853, aroused California deputized Harry Love and 20 Rangers to bring in Moretti dead alive in July. Love met up with some of Magretti's men. Any of you men know where Magretti is? No, Senor. We do not know. Captain Love did not know that the man he addressed was Magretti himself. All I know, Senor, is that he did not. He is not here for you to capture. At the moment, a man rode up who knew the famous killer and bandit. Captain, watch yourself. That means Moretti falls. He rode off jumping from a high buff. The horse went down under a hell of range of bullets. On foot, the bandit ran on. One, two, three bullets plumped into him. One after the other, he staggered. Oh, no more. That is enough. Your work is done. Death, he visited upon so many, came to the last to him. His head was cut off and put on display in San Francisco. Billy the Kid. This is a story of the private war, a man of war that falls a backdrop. Against which the gunman killer the West know, knows as Billy the Kid first came to prominence. The war takes its place in Southwest, and one of the grimmest tales of death and killing ever written by the roaring Coat Point forty five, been dug from the old letters, from bits of bullet ridden cloth, from an old Bible, from the drying whispers of the men hired to kill. It is the personal war of Billy the Avenger. We got Billy where he wants him. Good odds are five to one. This is where the kid dies. Begins with a rag, wagon rattling down the dusty main street, a town of Lincoln. On the wagon are seated Alex and Susan McSweeney, a young lawyer and his bride. They come to her. He sees wants to settle with his town. You own these Lincoln. We need a lawyer here. I'll be glad to have them. Lieutenant Murphy, a former major in the US Army, practically owned Lincoln. It was a tough town. Here the Harrell gang has settled his grudge against a town with sax guns. Here a Murphy maintained his crew of hired killers who rustled kettle for him for the Chisholm Ranch. In between times, Murphy hired McSween be his lawyer. One day, old John Chisholm caught some of my boys stealing. He steers, I want you to defend him. Are you, they are evil men, Mr. Murphy. I refuse to defend them.
So John Chisholm hired Alexander McSweeney to prosecute these wrestlers. McSweeney had them convicted and hung. A big Lieutenant Murphy swore vengeance. They die, all of them. If I hang my boys, I swear it. The only shot in the war of vengeance came in February 1875 between his partner Turnsdale. Murphy sends his regards. There were two witnesses to this cold bloody saying. One of them was Billy the Kid, working as a cowhand at the Turnsdale Ranch. Low down, dirty killers, 20 against one. Man shot down in a fair fight is all right. This is murder. Turnsdale was a friend of mine. These hombres will pay for this. He stalked the, the trails with a calm grimness. His horses went north to a little Albanian cafeteria. One of them stopped to wet his throat here. I'll give him a little lead to chew on. Howdy, I've been following you for a spell, hombre. All the way from Tumtel Ranch. The kid, he's after me. Death slowed itself in the gun, the kid's blue eyes. A gunman went for his colt. The kid did not seem to move. His son's shotguns were in his hands, splitting flame and lead across the room. A belly wheeled, he wheeled and was gone. And his horse footprints came back into the room, where a man's fingers were stiffening in death. The trail went west to Frontier's fault. Sometimes the kid caught his man out in the open. Where only Kuroti howled his story of the kill, the kid. You are one of them, don't you know your name? Don't know your name, but I never forget your face. Several times Billy the Kid rode with posses, hired gunmen, who defended Alexander, who defeated Alexander McSweeney, the lawyer, for Murphy's own paid gunmen. These men gunned down Morton and Baker. This is a turnstile. We never got the chance of giving you. They trapped the Texas Bill Roberts at Sawmill of Tanisolores River. There's thirteen of them, only one of me. I aim to cost them plenty. The belly made a dash for the rear door for little meal. Just one good crack at him and all I, is all I need. It's all over, boys. Come on in. We've got a bright burning chore to do. Burning chore to do. More than once a pretty woman whispered for information to the kid. He went man, man you asked for. He's been here to town to be, believe he, he stays at Trevor's house. You will want me to come. I thought you want to see these men. I do, Chantella. Later, I killed a lot of men. I never miss kissed you before. We, he, I wonder all the girls he's, he's likes you so much. Something late, late, sometime later, the same night, the bar, the cavernous house. The kid, say you, some, how, how you found me? You cut you down before you could clean liver. Dear liver. The fall of his body rings loud in stiff, sudden stiffness. One more killer sent to Boot Hill. A number of victims rose. One more town pounded in the distance. Behind the grim, grim, riding figure of the kid. A few more left. I'll get them all before I'm done. Before the kid continued his private vendetta, he worked once more with the Mitsuini Puff Fuzzy. Here comes Murphy's men. Get ready. Rifle barrels belched. Then a splats of flame, hot lead, ran... To meet Murphy's men, Sheriff Brady, who ran the law of Lincoln, as a Lieutenant Mar Murphy order dropped. <sniffs> One man ran for his life straight up the dusty street until shot me in the back. 
As the gun battle raged all around him, his men, his men lay helpless, dying. No man dared to bring him water. Water, water, somebody, bring me water. The successful ambush made Billy the Kid a marked man. Some days later, he was ambushed by five of the Murphy gang. <coughs> I got two bullets in my guns. Each one of you, I'm betting I won't need them all. Billy the Kid told the truth. In less than 15 seconds, five men lay dead around him. He still had three bullets left. It was on the hot July day that Met Sweeney was finally trapped in his own house. With Sweeney, with Billy the Kid and others of his high gunslingers. There in that house, I want every one of them dead by sundown. Start shooting. During all that day, no man died. There was, this was going in the siege. Next day, don't, ah! A moment later, his companion fell. His battle was on a, on in full force. As Colonel of the U.S. Cavalry held Alex Sweeney in talk, the besiegers set fire to their hounds. I command you to surrender, sir. Stop firing at once. I throw down your arms. If I did that, sir, these varmints would kill me. They are, in, they are rustlers and murderers. My men and myself are only defending ourselves. The fire caught hold of the side of the house through a side of flame. The swing walked to his death. Only Smith Swing and the three other men out of the fourteen caught in that blaze house. They now died by bullets. The others escaped, but the kid. The last to leave. They won here, but oh, someday I'll get them back to settle this fight once for all. A definite swing officially ended the Lincoln County War. Murphy himself was dead while in the fight at the Smith Sweeney house which took place. Our two hundred men are supposed to have died in this war. Our two hundred men are supposed to have died in this war, including all the principals. Though the war itself was ended, Billy the Kid kept up his own vendetta. It was not to end until three years later when Sheriff Fat Garrett was shot, was to shoot him down. Jesse James. The Civil War was over. Bitter feelings ran rampant. Along the Kansas Missouri Belder, cover baggers and riffraff came into the Missouri from the north. They stole and robbed. In answer to these robberies, a young Missourian named Jesse James began to rob too, fresh from recent service with the Quantrill Raiders, recovering from his war wounds. He ran again to robbing two banks wired flash across the country. He was a new man, kind of bad man, loose in bank United States. He was the bank robber. These were desperate times. A man was not safe on the lonely highway late at night. Nor was he safe even in his own farm. Rebels, but you lost the war, Jesse. My side won it. You got two Bronx I want. <coughs> I'm taking them. That flashing six gun barrel did nothing more than stun Jesse Jane physically. But deep inside left of sprang, a brand of hate. Take my horses on play plenty more with Northern Gold. The next few days, Jesse rode here and there in Missouri, visiting neighboring towns. His eyes saw everything. One night, Jesse James met with his brother Jane, Frank, of the Bob and Cole Younger. Nobody would be expecting this. That's what makes it so easy. I have to do it and ride into Liberty, flash your guns, and take money. Sounds good. I'm in. I'm. I'm, I'm for it. Date ferry. 
1866, the place, Liberty, Missouri. His little bank frees both of you. This is a holdup. He used a white grey sack that was to be his trademark in later robberies. Put the money in this sack. You try to sound an alarm, I'll blow you apart. The seconds ticked off. The only sound that was heard was the dry, rusty noise of crisp bank greenbacks being thrust into a bag. In a moment, their job was done, so one noticed that them as they swung up on their saddles. Easy does it, remember? These men that we tied for, up won't give, a, won't give us away for a while. No one paid that any attention as they trotted off. After all, who ever heard of anyone robbing a bank in broad daylight? The world, whole world was soon heard about the bank robbery. However, for this robbery, a liberty was to usher a new era, the era of Jesse James and Bush Cassidy, Billy the Kid, and the Dalton Branch. The guns of men like Will Bill Hooker and Wild Up were to go against, war against these bank robbers and trade robbers, gunmen and rustlers. But as these men cantered out of Liberty, Missouri, they did not know what they had begun. Still, no man can foretell what this, what might have been, what had happened to Jesse James. His mother had been able to pay off the mortgage on their farm. The bank will f- f- close if we c- can't pay the mortgage boys. I know well, one way we can raise the money to take care of the mortgages. So do I, Jesse. Another bank robbery. On October 30th, 1860. Six, the second bank robbery in America took place in Independence, Missouri. This is hold up. Don't make a move and you won't be hurt. All we want is your money. Besides Jesse James himself, there were the, these men in his gang at this time. Cole Younger, Frank James, Bob Younger, Sel Miller. With the gain track robbery, grain sack robbery, at his pummel. As he rode back down the main street to Independence, suddenly in the guard roared, the men just robbed the bank. They bring them, bring one out, of the, bring down one of them. Spurs jabbed in into horses, and one leap the bayonets were a full gullet. They were always flashing. Attracted by the sound of gunfire, men came running to add their own fire to the din. Outlaw bullets caught some and pinned them in death to the wall against which they stood. They got me. Others fell in the dusty streets. Angry men full galloping a posse and went galloping out of the pen, pen, independence hard on the heels of these daring robbers. They can't get away with corner the killers before dark. That posse lost the trail, safe and pursuit. The game divided up their loot. All had taken sixty-two thousand from Liberty and two thousand from Independence. A taste for loot was in their blood. It's an easy way to get money. I vote we get keep on robbing. For a few months the game laid low. The Danes boys worked at their farm, but sometimes Jesse slipped away to study the other banks. Is one just as easy to take as the others. It was March 2nd, 1867, when Jesse rode to Savannah, Missouri. His men, make this fast. We don't want to crowd too much, much to all, want to crowd our luck too much. The bank teller moved like lightning as the words of Jesse James cracked through the bank. Don't move it. Don't anyone move. Got to close the safe, lock it. Jesse fired. His hand slipped down for the doll and gave it a twist and he dropped, locking the big floor safe. The gunshot 
That gunshot altered, alerted the entire town. There was no time to pause and f- force a man to open the lock safe. Hey, boys, come running. The whole town is startling. Is starting towards us. Hurry up. I can't, I can't hold off a whole town. A whole squealed as he f- felt a little jab, spur, a spur jab. A man cried out hoarsely. A Colt revolver roared. A gang was in the saddle. And riding fast. Everyone, man, for himself, shoot to kill. For a little while, it was touch and go. Dirt Bronco, dig dirt Bronco. Let's get out of here. Jesse James and his men got away from Savannah. They got, but they got no money for their troubles, efforts. Still, the fever for easy loot was in their blood. They made a beginning, made a beginning. From this beginning, they went on to go on writing their ways for the annuals of America's criminal warfare. Warfare. Out of the 28 men who were in the history, Jesse is his, in his years of robbery, made up, Maybe only nine were to die in natural deaths. The rest, death by hot lead. A trail laid down by Jesse out of Savannah on a long, long March day was leading to their graves.